Hello everyone. Now let's have a look at the maximum likelihood estimation. So this sequence will introduce the principle of maximum likelihood estimation and illustrates the MLE, so the abbreviation of this is MLE. It's called a maximum likelihood estimation. We're going to illustrate this idea with some simple examples. Now, suppose we have a normally distributed random variable x. So this is normally distributed random variable x, which is normally distributed with mu and sigma square. So this is a variance, and this is a mean. This is a variance. So sigma will be standard deviation. Now suppose we have two samples. We draw two random numbers from this normal distribution. That is 4 and 6. Now at this moment, let's assume sigma standard deviation equals to 1. So this will be this will be our normal distribution and uh, this is a normal distribution random number a random variable x now we observed two uh, data points 4 and 6 suppose we initially consider the mu is 3.5 the mu is 3.5 under this hypothesis the probability density at 4 will be so if we assume our mu so this x is normally distributed with mu 3.5 and standard deviation 1 now under this assumption we can calculate what is the probability density to have a 4 and what is the probability density to have a 6 so this is our probability density. Probability density have a 4 will be 0 0.3521 and at 6 will be 0 0.0175. Then we will have a likelihood. The likelihood actually equals to uh, the product multiply this probability and this probability. We will have a joint probability density of these two observations. <coughs> Now over here, this plot is the distribution of our normal random variable, mu and sigma square. And uh, in the second plot, this is a likely, likely uh, joint density, joint probability density plot. So the L is the joint probability density. And the uh, x-axis is our parameter. So we want to see how the joint probability density is varying with respect to the parameter mu, because we assume our sigma equals to one. This is the assumption, and we will come late, come back later to talk about how to vary this sigma. But now, at this moment, we assume sigma is fixed. And let's see how the joint, dense, joint probability density is varying with, with respect to parameter mu. Now, let's change our parameter mu. So now we are assuming we are having a normal distribution with 4 and 1 squared. This is our new random distribution. So under this assumption, what's the density, what's the under this hypothesis, the probability density associated with two observations will be this is our new probability densities for four and six. For four and six. So previously we have point zero zero six two. So this is point zero zero six two. Point zero zero six two. And now we have a new joint probability density is point oh two one five. That means it's increasing. 
once we change the our hypothesis. Now we change the hypothesis to mu equals to 4.5. Now what's the probability density to have a 4? What's the probability density to have a 6? And it's 0.3521 and 0.1295. The joint probability density is 0 0.04. 4.56. This is 0 0.0456. So this is increasing. Now, if we increase to 5, what's going to happen? It's still increasing. Here, the joint probability density, it is increasing. We will see now 4 and 6 are symmetric around 5. Now, if we shift it further to 5.5, this number is Less than point, less than point uh, oh five eight five. So the likelihood function is begin to is beginning to decrease. Now the complete joint density function for different parameters mu has now been plotted in the lower diagram. We see the peaks is at five. So this is 5. OK, this is called maximum likelihood uh, estimation. So we want to maximize our joint density function. So if we have two observations, 4 and 6, we want to maximize, we want to select a parameter mu that will maximize this maximize. the joint probability density function. Now let's look at the mathematics of this example. If x is normally distributed with mean, mu and uh, sigma, this is a probability density function. Now, suppose this sigma, this guy equals to 1, sigma equals to 1, so the density function will simplify to the second expression. Now, we want to calculate the probability density for observations 4, x equals to 4 and 6. So this is the probability density function if we have an unknown mu. So what are our, our objective is to maximize Maxim, maximize actually it is max this joint density function so joint probability density for two observations is just as a product of the individual densities so in maximum likelihood estimation we choose our estimate mu that give us the greatest greatest joint density that is greatest joint density for the observation in our sample this value is associated with the greatest uh, probability or the maximum likelihood to ob obtain the observations in the sample so in the graphical treatment we saw that this occurs when mu is equal to 5 we will prove this case this must be the case mathematically so this is a joint joint probability density function for x equals to 4 and x equals to 6 now we want to find the value of mu that will be able to maximize the this expression so if we want to do this First, this is called likelihood function. Likelihood function for mu. Given the samples, sample observation 4 and 6. So this is the likelihood function of mu given that we have observation 4 and 6. To maximize this equation, we could differentiate with respect to mu and set the results equal to 0. 
Um, this could be a little bit difficult because now we have the mu on in the power term of exponential and also we have a square here. So how do we simplify this problem? So what we did is we use take a log on both sides. So log on the left side and log on the right side. So log L is a monotonically increasing function of L, meaning that log L increases if L increases and decreases if L decreases. So if we maximize log, log L, we will maximize the L function, uh, likelihood function too. So then we will know that if we we are going to choose the value of mu that maximizes log L is the same as the one that maximizes L, likelihood function. As it so happens, it is easier to maximize log L with respect to mu than it is to maximize L. So let's do a little bit uh, decomposition of this function because this is multiplication. If we uh, separate them, log function will change them into uh, addition. The summation of these two terms and because this is uh, another multiplication so we we separate this this to these two terms and this guy to these two terms so multiplications to summation now if we have log a power b it will become b log a so in this case log exponential minus one half x minus 4 square will equals to minus 1 half x minus 4 square log e but this log e actually is 1 so in this case we are going to decompose this guy this term so this will become because this equals to 1 this will become minus 1 half x minus 4 square term so a little bit further derivation we have the second term reduced to a single quadratic in uh, x and so that's the force so if we have a look at this equation continuously so first uh, we we do the multiplication to summation and then we separate this one to summation again and this one to summation again now we shift this power term to the front and we will have log e so we change it to this equation now it's simpler let's do the differentiation with respect to mu so log l is simplified to be this equation and uh, we know this is a quadratic function we can decompose this function to this term can be expanded as follows. Now let's take the different uh, differentiate. Let's differentiate the quadratic term, which we are equals to a minus mu. So applying the result, we obtain the differentiation of log l with respect to mu. The first term in the expression for log l disappears. Why is this guy disappears? this guy was disappeared why disappear because this is a constant term when we take the differentiation it becomes zero because it's not a function of mu so what we have is actually this term so if we make this equals to zero so we have 4 plus 6 equals to 2 mu then we have mu equals to 5 that's from the sec first order condition we confirm 5 is the value of mu that maximizes the log likelihood function and hence the likelihood function. Now, but we have a hat, mu hat over here. Why? Because, because we are now talking about an estimate of mu, it's not a true value. Note also that the second differentiation with respect to mu, the second order differentiation, let's differentiate this term again. So d log l square over d mu square 
and we are equals to minus 2. Since this is negative, we have found a maximum, not a minimum. Now we can general, generalize these results to n observations. Previously, we only have 4 and 6. Now, suppose we have n observations. Those are the data we connected from a, from a normal distribution with unknown mu. Now let's find out the mu using all the x given. So what we want to do is first we want to find the joint probability density function. So we multiply all the values together from x1 to x mu. Uh, not x mu, xn. So this will be the likelihood function. This is our likelihood function. So we want to find out mu, maximize the likelihood function, find a mu value that maximizes our likelihood function, given that we have observation x1 to xn. We will do this indirectly by taking the log L. So that is a log likelihood function. So the logarithm decomposition, just as what we discussed before, the multiplication becomes the summation. And then we separate this multiplication into summation again. This will become these two terms. And then we do all of them. So we will have n log 1 over square root of 2 pi y, n of them, because we have n terms. And then we, s we have all these terms, square uh, quadratic terms. So this is our log likely function. We are going to differentiate log l with respect to mu. So this is what we are going, we are going to get, and we are going to make them equals to zero. So make, once we make them equal to zero, so if this equals to zero, then we will have n mu. And uh, add all the data points together over here. So mu hat will equals to the average x bar. So at this at this time point, we have demonstrated that maximum likelihood estimator of mu is the sample mean. The second differentia uh, differential minus n is negative, confirming that we have maximized the log, log likelihood function. So far, uh, we have assumed that the sigma equals to 1. That is a standard deviation. Now, let's relax this assumption and find the maximum likelihood estimator of sigma 2. So let's first illustrate this process graphically with two observation examples, still 4 and 6. You see here, we still have 4 and 6. Now we change the standard deviation. You see the standard deviation becomes to be bigger. Now standard deviation equals to 2. Now let's keep mu fixed at 5 because we know it's average of 4 and five, uh, 6. Now if we change, so now we want to see how the likely function is varying with respect to the standard deviation. So we first we choose si uh, sigma equals to two. Then we have a lock, a joint probability density is 0 0.31, 0 0.031. Now if we make the uh, standard deviation to be one, that is a little bit smaller, then we have a joint density function. So it is decreasing. It is decreasing. So now let's do one more. So that's 0.5 and uh, it's over here. So if we do this for different uh, values of sigma, and as we can see, we can do this using a computer, the joint density has now been plotted it's like this. And the maximum is obtained when sigma equals to 1. We will now look at this mathematically. Start with the probability density for, uh, for x, given mu and sigma. This is only for 1x. Now suppose we have n observations, m observations, x1 to xn. Now we have the joint probability density function. Now this is a likelihood function. Likelihood function. We will find the values of mu and sigma we want to find the values of mu and sigma, which maximize this likelihood function. We do this indirectly by maximizing the log L, log likelihood function. Since we have the log L, and which is a function of mu and sigma, 
let's do a little bit of expansion and uh, we will see this is uh, decomposed to these two terms now we have see now we have you see we have Sigma and mu Sigma so we have Sigma over here so what are we going to do now how to maximize this likelihood function mice how to maximize this function we are going to take the partial derivatives with respect to mu and sigma separately and make them equal to zero first we take the this is our log likelihood function we take the partial derivatives which is with respect to mu then this goes away because mu is not a, a function this is not a function of mu this is not a function of mu only here has has mu terms so what we get is take the partial derivatives with respect to mu what we get is this equation now what are we going to do we're going to set it equal to zero once we set it equal to zero we see that this is actually x bar y because this equals to mu hat equals to one over n sigma xi Now, let's take the derivatives, partial derivatives of log likelihood function with respect to sigma. So we see here we have sigma, and here we have sigma, but over here we don't have sigma, so this one will become zero. Now, we will have this term and uh, this term. Why this becomes minus log sigma? Because log 1 over sigma is log sigma minus 1, we can put the power term in the front of the log sign this will become minus log sigma however how come this guy becomes this guy because this is summation inside we just take all the, the common terms minus one half out and uh, we make this sigma this sigma power 2 to be sigma minus 2 in the numerator and minus one half is over here so once we take the derivatives with respect to sigma, this term will become minus n over sigma. This will become sigma minus 3. Why, why will this become to be the minus sign to become a plus sign? Because we have minus 2 here. So we will have minus 2 here, sigma minus 2 minus 1. So this is minus 3. Now we make this equals to 0. Now what we get is the sigma term. We have already demonstrated the markly, maximum likelihood estimator of mu is the sample mean. Now, maximum likelihood estimator of the population variance is the mean square deviation of x. Note this one, the MLE estimator of the variance is biased. The unbiased estimator is divided by m minus 1, not n. So, that's why the sample variance, when we calculate the sample variance, we usually use xi minus x bar squared. So this one is unbiased estimator. And however, this one is biased. So MLE estimator of the population variance is biased. However, the one that we're using to calculate sample mean, uh, sample variance is not biased. However, it can be shown that maximum likelihood estimator is asymptotically efficient in the sense having a smaller mean square errors than the unbiased estimator in large samples. So that's the conclusion. So this is the end of the introduction to maximum likelihood estimation. And uh, this introduction is, uh, I think, it's useful and helpful when you are doing research, when you need to use maximum likelihood estimator to estimate parameters. And this is not just for the uh, for estimating mu and sigma in the normal distribution. It can also be used to uh, estimate the parameters like beta, y equals to x beta. It can also be used in linear regression to do the to estimate the parameter beta so that's MLE to estimate beta given all the uh, observations 
we have x and y. Okay, this concludes this this concludes this video.